So looking at page 363, number 75. Integral of x times 5 to the negative x squared dx. Uh, almost always when we have exponents, we want u to be the exponent, and hopefully du shows up. And it does here, or at least close to shows up anyway. Just put a negative 2 on that, and then a negative 1 half out front. So that gives us du and 5 to the u, and that negative 1 half hanging out out front. Now it's down to a straightforward, maybe I shouldn't have gone so fast to the u substitution, because now this is what all of them look like from yesterday. And the integral of 5 to the u is 5 to the u, except we need to divide by natural log of 5. Plus c, and I guess we need to put the u back in there. So negative 1 half, 5 to the negative x squared, divided by natural log of 5. Um, natural logs is, is something that has some of those weird properties that go with it, which means sometimes CalcChat gets a little creative with, with what they do with the answers, but we don't have to worry about that. Are we okay with this for 75? Is it okay to leave those x's negative, like those exponents? Because I've noticed we've been doing it, like it's just okay to like, leave them for the most part? Yes. Okay. So I know that was like a rule in the last yeah, I, I want to change that test because it's okay on the AP test to have negative exponents. Oh, okay. So it, that would be yeah. a, a, maybe a calc chat simplification. Uh, also on a multiple choice test, they might, they, I might flip that over. But surely if you made it to there and then you started looking at answers, you would see what happened yeah. with the negative. Okay. But yes, free response, negative exponents are fine. And then 77. Yes. Oh, good question. There was I was looking at the test yesterday, starting to work on it, <coughs> and there was one similar to this one. And uh, yeah, I had to. Was it, maybe it was this class that asked me if I had to relearn this stuff every year. Like, no, not every year, but there's always a few problems in certain sections. It takes me a minute to think, wait a minute, what, what do I do here? This was one of those, and I saw it on the test. I'm like, oh, have we done that? Like, Actually, yes, that's today's homework. Um, any guesses from you on what, on what you should be that would make things work out? Remember, we want to pick you so that du shows up. Let's let you be the denominator. Because then du is pretty close to the top. 3 to the 2x, chain rule, times 2. And then the sort of bonus uh, piece of this, 3 to the x means I need a natural log of 3. So that's that's pretty close. I'm only off by a, a constant. I mean, it's not a nice constant, but at least it's just a constant. It is, it's kind of weird because natural log is weird, but natural log of 3 is just a number. It's not a variable. Okay, so it's not like when you, you, you couldn't do it by sine. Correct. You couldn't do it by sine of x. You could do it by sine of pi over 6. Oh. That showed up somehow. Um, but you can't, you can't fix with variables. Okay. Uh, you can only fix with, with numbers. Um, so that means a 2 natural log 3 needs to go out front, the bottom. All of that numerator is du, and the denominator we picked was u. That's, that's a good review question right there. What's the antiderivative of 1 over u du? Natural log. So natural log of the absolute value of u. I'm going to go ahead and plug u in. plus 
C. I think that would be another one where we don't necessarily we don't need the natural log because one plus three to the two x is always positive, but it wouldn't be wrong to have it. The absolute value would always be positive. Or, excuse me, what's inside of that is always positive, so you don't need the absolute value bars. Okay. So that would be one where on a multiple choice test, I could give the answer as... They like to do that when they can. <clears throat> but it would not be wrong to leave it like this. And if it's on a multiple choice test, they're, they're not going to give both answers because they're both correct. So if you made it this far and then saw that as an answer, you'd be fine. And hopefully you'd realize, oh yeah, that's because that's always positive, so absolute value bars aren't needed. Good questions. Um, anything else from 363 or from prior? So we'll give a, a first hint on Page 354, number 105. Yeah, I would split that up. 5 over e to the 2x minus e to the x over e to the 2x. There's why we can simplify. So 5e to the negative 2x minus e to the negative x. <coughs> and now rather than one complicated integral, you got two easy, easier integrals. Can I stop there on 105? Yeah. Let's do 123 then. Well, it would it would vary. This for this piece we'd let u be that, and for this one, well, I don't know what to do. U1 and u2, or u and v, like handle them separately. But for the first one, u would be 2x. For the second piece, u would be, or excuse me, negative 2x. And this one, u would be negative x. So you'd have to handle them separately. And if you were careful, you could still call them both u as long as you kind of had them, you know, you knew what you were doing. If you if that bothers you, you could call them u1 and u2, or you call them u and v, either way. 123. The second derivative is equal to 1 half e to the x plus e to the negative x. f of 0 is 1. f prime of 0 is 0. Okay, we've done a couple of these. These have been on the both of the most recent tests, right? Like integrate, use the conditions. Integrate again, use the conditions. Um, there's, those are going to keep showing up. And because of that, that will make, um, when we come back, and it's like almost a month from now, um, differential equations, separation of variables, that's sort of what that is. And so we try to build that in to make it a little easier when we get there. Okay, so I need to antiderivative this to get the first derivative, then use my information, and then antiderivative again. So first antiderivative, um, I'm going to leave the 1 half out front. The integral of e to the x is just e to the x. What about the integral of e to the negative x? Or do I need to do a u substitution on that? Like it's simple enough that some people might jump straight there. Other people would say, you know what, let's let u be negative x. du would be negative dx. And I end up with minus e to the negative x. I didn't show much work there. Do I need to show more? F prime of 0 is 0. Um, yeah, you're right, plus C. I would have figured that out when I tried to figure out. I was going to plug in, and yeah, that's where the plus C is needed. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I did these separately. Like the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. I didn't need any u substitution on that one. This one, it's only off by a negative sign, so I might could have fixed that without going through the u du stuff. E to the 0 minus e to the 0 plus c. Uh, that was convenient of them to do for us because e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And so c is 0. <coughs> or at least the first c. We know one, we're going to get another one here in a minute. Okay, integrate again. Again, I'm going to leave the 1 half alone. The integral of e to the x is still e to the x. The integral of negative e to the negative x is going to be positive e to the x. That negative, all that's, the chain rule off that negative is just changing the sign back and forth. Plus c. Again, that's a different c. But if you're comfortable that we've already sort of resolved the first c, then we can call it c if it bugs you. In column C1 and C2. This time, if I plug in 0, I get 1. So 1 equals 1 half e to the 0 plus e to the 0 plus C2. And oh, they did us another favor here. C2 also equals 0. Final answer for f is that, as a teacher, I kind of don't like that both c's were 0. That means you could have ignored the c altogether and not even thought about it and still would have gotten the right answer. <laughs>